Hello, welcome to your favorite tech show on television with Don Pedro Agambi, where we look at issues, trends, developments in the global ICT industry. We also play host to tech innovators, big thinkers, the CEOs, and of course, the professionals. Today promises to be very informative, educative, and of course, forward looking as always. Stay with us. In case you've just joined us, you're watching Africa's leading tech show on television. When we come back from this quick break, you'll meet our tech personality of the week. There's a lot of noise in the media about 5G, uh, but the realization is 4G coverage in Nigeria is still somewhere around 45% of our population. And you ask yourself, FinTech should be on a cloud platform. So which cloud are they sitting on? So Nigerian fintech doing business in Nigeria, but they're sitting on the cloud outside of Nigeria. If you say that there is no Nigerian software to handle LNG shipping, if you say that there is no Nigerian software that can, that can handle remote well-held operations in the oil and gas sector, if you say there's no Nigerian software that can handle billing for power systems, despite the fact that your, your law already says that 70% of technology in the deregulated uh, PHCN, 70% of the technology must be Nigerian local content. And then you say there is no billing system that is Nigerian. There is no this, there is no that. When will they ever be? Until we understand that actually the potential and the capacity of nations lies in the heads and minds of human beings and not under the ground. It's a country going nowhere. Our tech personality of the week is the Executive Director of Marketing at Boss Boss. His name is John Oluwatobi Olubimbo. Watch this. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. How would you assess the state of the transport industry in Nigeria? Okay, so um, every industry uh, reflects the state of the nation itself. Um, because Nigeria is a developing nation, I don't want to say it's a world country. So the state of our transportation too is developing. It's far from what it should be or it's far from what's obtainable in um, first class countries in the world. So it's, it's developing. That's the way I would describe it. Do you think that the transport industry is innovating enough to add value to the growth of the economy? Uh, innovating enough, not yet, not yet, because we've seen that other industries have enjoyed innovation, especially in tech, for example, financial services, the advent of a lot of fintech companies, the financial services have moved a lot. Transport services over the last decades has not been as innovative as it should be. Yes, there's a lot of presence, there's a lot of need, but it is not adding the kind of value that it should add to our nation at large. And I think this is because there's a lot of convergence on very few modes of transport. So we have a lot of land mass, we have a lot of water, but you see that there is an undue convergence on just the road network, which puts, you know, there's a lot of congestion, there's a lot of traffic. So to, to be able to add to the growth of the economy, we need to open rail lines, we need to expand more waterways, we need to do more you know, by exploring all the different modes of transport. Until we do that, we will not, we will not uh, maximize the potential of transportation in adding to the economy of the nation. You know, the, saying a lot is a very relative statement. You know, if, we, if we go to other countries of the world, we, we will see that well, what we call a lot is not so much. Let me, let me give you an example. Um, so there is just one major port in Nigeria, which is the Papa port, but we have a large, you know, with the Atlantic Ocean borders the south of Nigeria. So we should have at least 10 
upper pots that are like upper pot, right? So that we have just one. If you get there, it looks busy, and you might think the government is doing a lot. But the government is not doing enough, to be fair. But, you know, to be candid, um, the government alone cannot do it. If you see many nations of the world, we've had companies, individuals, private entities that come to partner with the government to help the government to uh, maximize, again, all the modes, all the opportunities in transportation. So, and essentially, that's what we are trying to do. We understand that the government is doing a bit, but we are also trying to put in to help. Can you highlight some of the major challenges facing that industry? Okay, the first one is again congestion. We are we are not exploring all the possible modes. So there's a lot of congestion. So if you want to move goods from one part of Nigeria to the other, if you want to move people from one part of Nigeria to the other, your most present option is just the road. Yes, you know, there's been a bit of commercial flying, but there are still a lot of cities, state capitals that you can access through commercial airlines. The same goes for rail. There are so many places in Nigeria you can access by rail. All of Nigeria is supposed to be opened up by rail. All the coastal cities should be opened up by water. If I'm going to Nigeria State, for example, I should be able to go by water and not and decongest the road. So because we have not opened all these modes, there is a lot of congestion on the road. And the roads themselves, the infrastructure, is not up to par, it's not what it should be like. So you have a road that is not um, wide enough, that is not good enough, having to take the burden of 200 million people. So over time, some of those roads become uh, dilapidated. There are so many bad roads in the country. So these are some of the things that affect transportation as a sector. So what we need to do is to open it up, allow more private uh, individuals to come into the sector. A bit of deregulation should happen here and there, and we will see it blossom. Okay, what is the connection between charter services and traditional transportation? Okay, so charter services is just one of the branches of um, transportation, and as BuzzBus is one of the products that we have first launched. One of the things that we've noticed is that there is a high level of insecurity in Nigeria because the, the system itself is very unregulated, is very unmanaged. So anybody, any time they can hire, can put a car on the road and start to convey people from one point to the other without any sense of responsibility or accountability. So one of the things that we've done is to create a system that is accountable, where somebody can order a ride or charter a vehicle in a, in a system that is secure, that is accountable, and that is also affordable, and it's easy to use. So it helps to uh, you know, ease the burden of one of the modes. So um, you want to charter a vehicle, you number of vehicles, either we do land charter, we do air charter, we do water charter. If you want to do any of that, we've created a platform that allows people to invest. You can bring your vehicles in a secure platform, or if you need that service, you can get that service in a secure platform. So the issues of insecurity, lack of excellence, or difficulty in accessing that service is taken away. And that's just our own quota in one of the sectors in the broad industry of transportation. And what is the future of charter services in Nigeria today? Okay, so sometimes what, some of the things that a developing country needs to do sometimes is just to look at the country that is fully developed and just look at what is working and try to duplicate and then adapt it to your local to your local market. The charter industry market is a very, very, very huge industry, especially when you want to go into tourism and travel. So if we have people come flying into Nigeria to just come and see as Nigeria begins to open up, the person is not going to buy a vehicle just because it's traveling to a new location. So that's the entire travel and tourism industry that we need charter service. And it should be the same thing if you are traveling to another city, especially by air or by water, if all those modes of transport are open. But when you get to your destination city, you shouldn't go there and have to buy a vehicle to move around. You should just be able to charter a vehicle, do whatever you need to do, and then return to your, your place of origin. How can digitization help to revolutionize the transport industry? Oh, a lot, a lot. So one, one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of people in best in transportation is because while you are trying to ensure your money is not lost, it's possible your health is lost in, in that course. So you put a few vehicles on the road and you can't drive all of them, right? You have to have drivers. And then once you put that human factor, if there's no system of checking and monitoring and tracking, human beings can go funny. So 
you invest some vehicles or some money, and you have to be monitoring them, monitoring them uh, during the maintenance. You have to monitor that they do everything that they should do. You have to ensure that the money that they return is the money they make. So one of the things that tech does is that it takes away the burden of having to physically oversee that entire process. Our system is such that if you, if you put in a few vehicles, you can be in Canada, you can be in Uganda, and you can track your vehicles in real time. You can see what's up with your vehicles. So it gives you peace of mind. It allows more people to be confident enough to invest in that sector. That's one of the things that technology does. And then it also allows us to account. You know, if you check the news, there's, there's always a story of tragedy. Somebody got into a vehicle, he's now missing, nobody knows where they are, and all of that. So if we have a digitized system of transportation, some of our security concerns, some of our accounting concerns, some of our uh, financial concerns can be taken away because tech finds a way or provides a way where we can monitor the entire process from end to end. Tell us the mission and the vision of Boss Boss to the economy. Um, our vision is to be the number one provider of transport solutions, both to governments, to corporations, to individuals. And by doing that, we, are, we provide you know, a lot of jobs. We're providing jobs right now. We have a staff strength of uh, about 60. And we are, as we expand in the coming months, we're going to employ more. We're going to do a lot of trainings. We realize for the tech sector, we need to train because a lot of people come uh, not at the skill level that we are hoping to have, but you know, rather than try to import skills from outside the country, we just decide to have a training system or have an internship program where you can come, you learn, and then you grow your skill and then you join. So really, and then um, we're also introducing some new products called Ride Hill, where we would empower drivers. So the idea is that you drive to own your own vehicle. So we are going to be empowering people by providing jobs. We are also going to create a secure system of taxation you know, for, for government and we are also going to be helping governments you know, create a unified platform for their transports. What innovations should the industry expect from Bus Bus? Ah, okay, so first of all, we are very innovative. We are very, very innovative. And we are very, very adaptable. We, so a lot of service providers just see a system and try to copy. What we try to do is to adapt. So it's a lot of design thinking. We focus on our markets and then build what suits our markets. And then we are very, very, I want to use the word patriotic. We, are, we believe in Nigeria. We believe in, and we are, we are extending a bit to other nations of Africa, but we believe Nigeria should be the solution for all things. We are the giant of Africa, so we really should be that giant. So we are patriotic in our thinking. We are patriotic in our approach. We believe in the nation. We believe in the economy. And what sets us apart really is our innovation. It's our innovation and excellence. We are developing without you know revealing too much. We are we're planning something that will potentially change the game of air travel. Uh, I, I would not say too much. We are also in boats. We are also creating an enterprise solution that allows you know, investors and people who are already operating in transports to have a system where they can they can fully optimize and monetize their operations so all of that is going to be coming out in the first quarter the bus bus mobile app is now currently on android and ios so the the uh, application you will see the job caters for charter services again and then we also have our web app if you go to our website you will find a link directly to our web application so that means that you can access our services from a mobile phone or from a desktop device mr lua to be what is your last word as we wrap up this segment so um i know that at this time for so many reasons a lot of people are losing hope in the But um, because of the likes of us, those, those of us that we have chosen to build, I just want to tell you know, that there is hope for Nigeria. If you check nations of the world, they were built on the back of nations like us. If, you, if you've seen the documentary, you learn that built America, you hear the likes of Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, which is what the likes of Tesla, Zuckerberg are doing right now. We are doing the same thing. The terrain might not be the same, but you know, whatever your mind is you can achieve. So I, I just want this to be a communication of hope, you know, and 
if you are part of our direction, you will see the hope. Because we started very little and we are expanding rapidly. And uh, expanding so rapidly that people from other nations are inviting us to come and replicate what we are doing in Nigeria, in, in other African nations. And it's possible. So whatever dream that anybody has, it's possible. It's possible. It might be tougher here than other places, but it's still possible. All right, I'm afraid that's our first time will allow us on this segment. Thank you indeed for finding time to talk to us. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. That was our tech personality of the week, Mr. John Luatobi Olubimbo, who is the executive director of marketing at Boss Box. We hope you found this edition quite useful, informative, and educative. If you want to reach us, kindly do that on the numbers and emails now showing on your screen. On behalf of the entire production crew, thanks for watching. Same time, same station. I'll be back next time. I'll see you.